But we thank you, Jesus, because I don't know about you guys, but uh, sometimes when we look to us, when you look for this world in everything it's going on, sometimes you, you get like frustrated. You see so much crimes, so much things happening. Even in your life, we see sometimes with um, sickness, when you see people, they are not fair with us. When we see things happening in our lives. But uh, I want to tell this. It's amazing that you are here today. And taking the time you would, could be doing something else. To be listening to the word of God. Because it's one more day that you're going to get encouragement from this place. To continue on the way that God called you to be and i thank you so much i thank you jesus for the even the little bit we with wisdom or knowledge of the bible or with my limited english but that i can explain to you what god did put on my heart so since we are having Communion every Sunday. <laughs> I don't see that yet, <laughs> but uh, it's ready. Amen. I was I was thinking like I was thinking about the the bread and the, and you know the wine as a as a as a blood of Jesus. And I I started to search about this. The title of the message. I, I was talking to Brandon. Like I think. Only with that picture we could preach the whole thing today, maybe in more. Because one drop of the blood of Jesus, it's sufficient. <laughs> one drop. And I see the drop. And I see the cross right there. And the, his remembrance we do. We, we get together in communion. And we get the wine. Uh, the juice, the, 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 you know, the grape juice, as uh, at the blood of Jesus, and you get the bread as this, as the, he's fresh. And that uh, actually is the body of Christ, is the church. And we are the one who is rapid for everyone tasted. <laughs> hey, Jesus. So, I was, I was thinking, um, I was I was in, I went back to the beginning. Uh, Pastor Kelly, a couple of years ago, I think he sold that, so he had a mannequin, and uh, sometimes we use that mannequin in our preaching. It would be good if we had it here today, but it's okay. We can. I think everyone know what is the mannequin. No, that's okay. <laughs> no, it's okay. We we all know that, and. Uh, I can see as, you know, at the beginning of the world, uh, as God was made in the man, you know, the first man, and that he was with no life until God blew his, blew in, a, in a, you know, on a, in Adam, let's say, in a man. And he like, whew. and when he did that, the man became alive as a God's image, same thing like God, pure, like right there. And uh, after this, you know, he, he was perfected, amen? Adam was perfected. And then God made, um, he, he, was, he was perfected. But uh, with the sin, after the sin, that mannequin, now, he lost the communication with God, and now he is death again. So, we see the mannequins in the stores when you go, and uh, the people use shirts to show, 
and that they put the arms up and they stay like whatever the money <laughs> whatever you go another day I went there I see the money key upside down I say oh my god upside down yeah it's, it's to show the shoes you know make it easy for you if you see the, the mannequin upside down you're gonna see like the foot and they see how the world when he is that spiritually he can follow the things the way the devil wants to so you go to the mannequin and then someone wants like i want the arms up i want to face down i want to sit it and the way as the owner of the store uh, wanted, he put that mannequin to be on. And I see today, with the humanity, when he lost that com communication with God by the sin, the way it's like that, and they even realize it. Even sometimes us, sometimes us, we like... When you try to do the way we think it's okay, and they say, no, it, it's wrong. You, can't do, you cannot do that. Have you asking God if he, he wants to do this way? But the best way, it's, uh, it's when you have something to follow and you met the target. Uh, I talked to the Brazilian people um, two weeks ago. I don't know if you all know what is a plumb. Pastor Kelly knows. Plumb. It's a plumb, right, Pastor Kelly? <clears throat> plumb, it's something that has a weight. And that when you want to build a wall on straight, you use that thing to make the, the wall straight, nice, and level, upside. So in Brazil, you use this a lot. I don't know in, uh, in your place. But uh, when you build blocks... You have to use that little plump to go block by block until that wall, you know, you can build in 10 feet of the wall. If you follow the plump, always going to be on level. Sometimes I see like the guys when they are building and they go, oh, go by, go by ice. <laughs> and when you go like one meter or maybe like five feet up, it's so bad, it's bad. And then they say, you need to break it and do it again. It's bad. And always good way we can have something to follow. So this world, it's offering his rules. If you don't have Jesus to follow, we have to follow someone. And they are ready to give us what to do. And um, when, when you follow the world, we see how bad it is sometimes after this. I was looking when Adam and Eve, they was listening the serpent, and uh, Eve decided to take the fruit. She ate. The Bible doesn't say anything until that. So the Bible say, she ate the fruit, and she gave it to Adam. After she gave the fruit to Adam, and then they realized they was naked. So, I see something here as God called the Adam first, and from the rib, from the, from the rib of Adam, he, God made Eve. Are you following me? So, Eve has the same blood as Adam. Um, now, from that on, we're going to start to have the seed of the sin. Because when Adam sinned, she, she ate the fruit. But it uh, look like when he did when he completed, now it's done. The connection, it's gone. Now they lost the connection, they're going to die. Now the blood's going to die. And um, God had a solution for that. He sent Jesus. And then he sent Jesus 
to the room of a woman. So that we have that conversation. I know Pastor Kelly is a biology, bi uh, bi biologist. <laughs> but I, I'm going to tell you this. I never realized it. They were my, I will talk to my family about that. Maybe you guys realize it, what I'm going to tell you now. And, uh, but I never pay attention on this. So my question is, how is the baby in the room of the woman? The egg is there every month, let's say like that. And uh, if the, it's not fertilized, it's going to go out. And this is going to keep repeating every month. So, as soon the egg is fertilized, now become, it starts the process of the baby, right? And uh, my, question, my question is, where the blood of the baby comes from? Anybody know? I, I think everybody knows. Like Pastor Kevin. Huh? Yeah, so let's, let's go now for a normal pregnancy. A normal pregnancy. So you, me and my wife, we had James. He was in the belly. Where the blood of James came from? Huh? Come from Jesus. Anybody else? Huh? But he okay. He the, the baby was inside of the the mom, right? So for me, I said the blood. I, I see you looking at Google. <laughs> no. I hope not. Okay. I was because for me, as inside of the mom's room would be from mom's blood. So, have you guys think about that once? <laughs> I can ask Pastor Kelly. He can explain for me. Amazing. Yeah, thing. And, uh, okay. That's one, that's one thing. You guys, I, I see you guys like, uh-oh. Oh. The egg. When the duck has the egg, always you're going to see little ducks coming from the egg. No. You should say no. <laughs> no. I learned this with Kimberly, and she was in a farm class. Thank you, Kim, for coming to farm class, and she learned that. I'm telling you, I was surprised with that. But when the egg is fertilized with a boy, a man, a sperma, right, Pastor Kelly? And then that egg, yes. We're going to have little ducks from that egg. So the duck is going to be on top, or the chicken is going to stay on long, uh, I don't know how long, Pastor Kelly, maybe 25 days, and then you're going to see the big, and he comes out. So I think after a couple hours, when the egg comes now, you can see the blood <laughs> inside the egg, where you put the egg against the, the light. So, if the egg is outside the ducky or the, or the chicken, where that blood came from? The mom duck? Huh? Both? Pastor, can you, can you explain? No? Okay, so I was doing some searching, and I did that. Everything comes from the man's when is a fecund, when is fertilized by the man's sperma, or or the boy when the on when the duck fertilizes the you know the egg. 
without the man's seed, even from the animal or even on the man, the human being. Nothing happening. So, for example, if you go to the hospital, you need to tell your type of the, the blood. Have you heard about like when the baby born and the baby doesn't have the mom's type and even the father's type? Sometimes the brother has the type. So that means the mom doesn't give, she didn't give the blood. She didn't give the blood. That's when I, I was, I, I don't know, for me personally, it was a, a, something like in making me so like, wow. Where I want to go, I want to go, how was amazing the plan of God send a seed from the father to an egg of the woman and that she did anything to help the baby. The blood of Mary didn't help in anything because it came everything from God. Can you realize that? She was antibiotic, antibiotics passed through the umbilical, yes. Virus, yes. Food, yes. But not the blood. They never mix it. Because if the blood mix it up, they both can die. If, you, if someone go to the hospital and get a wrong type of blood, you can die. You, can, you need to have the exactly type of the blood. And I was like, wow. I never listened to someone say something about this and they imp making me so much like how the God's, the Jesus' blood is so precious, so pure. It's something for us. Uh, you know, what brought me to, to say this to you today is we have been taking now every week the Jews that represent the blood of Jesus and we have uh, taking the bread as, as, as the flesh of Jesus. So, as the blood is so pure, and when we cleanse this for us, when you accept this, we see the power of this blood. You see how many things this, this blood has a power to do in our lives. Have you realized this? So, I want to read, I think it will be in Luke chapter 1. Did, you, did you anybody still want to do any question about what I just said? Did you guys understood what I'm saying? The blood came, the, the baby by itself, he has the blood. You know, the mom doesn't give blood, doesn't give that. So as soon the egg goes into the, as soon the, the seeds goes inside of the egg of the mom, the baby does by itself. He produces his own blood. You know what I mean? That's why I want to say. So, and then the Luke chapter 1, the verse 35 said, The angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, also the Holy One, who is born from you will be called the Son of God. So the Holy Spirit was the one who gave the seed to Mary. So the seed came from the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. And then the next verse, Acts chapter 17, said, From the woman he made all the nations, that they shouldn't inhabit the, the whole earth. So, by Adam, by the seed of Adam, okay, he made all the nations that, uh, that they shouldn't inhabit the whole earth. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him 
though he is not far from any one of us. Why he did that? He came. He came to be close to us. It's available for me, for you, for whoever wants to have it. Hallelujah. I'm thank you, Jesus. I'm thank you, Jesus, for that. The Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Through one man, Adam, the sin entered the world. Remember when I said to you, the Bible is not mentioned the Eve because she was the one who took it. But after the man, he was the one who has the responsibility. He has the one who has the seed. He is the one who is going to multiply. Who, he is the one who has, who, who has the power to multiply. So he, he was the first blood. He was the first born. So through the woman, Adam, sin entered the world and death through sin. And third, and third death is spread to all men because all sinned. So because of the man, now I, I even... I even was, uh, yeah, I'm going to say this in a, in a, after this, the next verse. Uh, the Romans chapter 5 and verse 19 and 21 said, Grace abounds much more than sin. For as by one man disobedience, um, uh, for, as, for as by one man's disobedience, men were made sinners. So also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace abound, abounded much more. So even when the law entered to the offense might abound, doesn't matter. But where sin abounded... Grace abounded much more, so that a sin reigning in death, even so grace might reign, might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Because of the disobedience of woman, now everybody sinned. But because of Jesus Christ's blood, when he obeyed the Father, now everyone who listen the word I'm telling, who is listening the, the color of Jesus and say, Jesus, I know that your blood is pure and nobody else's blood can do anything that your blood can do. It. And I accept it. Doesn't matter how much sin do you have. If you have abundant sin, super more abundant will be the, the, the grace of God in your life. Hallelujah. So... Adam was the first man, he sinned. Now we have the human sinned. Eve, she left from the rib of Adam. She has the same blood of Adam. So now Cain, Abel, Abel and Seth, they have the same blood of Adam. Adam. Okay? From Adam ahead, Everybody's going to be seen it. And you see, the first murder of the Bible, Cain killed his brother Abel. And you see that God called Cain and said, hey, where is your brother? Because the blood in the earth, in the land, it's, it's calling. And the, look what the next verse said. Genesis chapter 4, verse 10. He said, what have you done? The voice of your brother blood, it's crying to me from the ground. Look at what Hebrews 12, 24 said. And to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to this sprinkled blood, which speaks better than the blood of Abel. So, you know what I'm saying? When Jesus Christ was on that cross, his blood went to that floor, went to the, the, the earth, and I think the blood of Jesus was so powerful to heal even the curse of the earth. Can you believe on this? How powerful is the, the God Jesus is? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
I want to read with you First Peter chapter 1 from verse 18 and says, For you know that it was not with a perishable things such as silver or gold that you are redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forests forefathers, but with the precious blood of Jesus, a lamb without blemish or defect. We see when you say it's not a perishable thing, it's pure. It was a pure thing. No silver. That's why Pastor keeps telling us in here, silver and gold, I see how when we receive silver and gold, when we receive money, when you work, you go to work, you got money back, you work three hours, you receive because you work three hours. You work a week, you receive a week. The money that we have, the money that this world has is perishable. And for you that I was, was not perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed was a pure blood of Jesus. Pure blood of Jesus. And uh, hallelujah. Let's go to the next verse. And verse 20 to 21 say, He was chosen before the creation of the world. He was chosen before the creation of the world. You see, if you read the Bible, you're going to see how the, the Bible has blood everywhere. It's blood everywhere. Actually, when Adam and Eve sinned, God has to kill an animal to give the skin to cover them up. So you see the blood already right there. And this is saying Jesus was, he, you know, Jesus was chosen before the creation of the world but was revealed in those last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the death and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. It's because of him. If you believe on this power of, of, of Jesus, what the, he did, that's, that's where it's coming from. It's not from your work, trying so hard, it's because of him. The next, the next slide is going to say, uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincerely love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart, for you have been born again. For you have been born again. Remember when I told you about the mannequin? He has the first growing from God's mouth, but he sinned. He was lost. He lost the connection. But with the blood, he make a new covenant. He make a new thing. And then, by the blood of Jesus, we will be born again. We will be born again. He is not looking anymore. Jesus is not looking anymore for your sin. He is looking the blood of Jesus washing away your sin. Hallelujah. For you have been born again, not of a perishable seed. You see here? Not of a perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. And the next say, For all men are like grass, and all the glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, withers and the flowers fall. But the word of Lord stands forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. So we pass. You know, the people say like, like a Coca-Cola. When you open it, the gas is gone. And that when we get older, I was, I was trying to push Brando together here. <laughs> I was saying, Brando, you were born in 1980s, you know. I was 1990 something. I said, okay. I said, I'm, I was trying to make you older. But uh, when we get older, we see how the time flies. 
we look to the back, we look back and we see, we still remember the kids as a baby, we still remember the kids running in a house, why, oh, you break this, you broke this, you did that. We still remember this, but uh, we're getting older, and we see this word is really confirming this. For all men are like grass, and all the glory is like the flower of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. I have John chapter 10, the, the, the verse 17 and 18, it says, For this reason the Father loved me, because I laid down my life. He chose to lay down his life. He was beating so hard, but he said, I choose to give my life for you. I choose because I laid down my life so that I may take it again. What he's talking about? He's going to die and he's going to resurrect it. Amen? No one has taken it away from me. Nobody takes it from me. It's my choice, God say. Actually, Jesus is saying, it's my choice to give my life for you. Nobody takes from me. I have, um, but I lay down, I lay it down on my own initiative. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. That's why he's resurrected. That's why he's alive inside of me and inside of you. Amen. This commandment I received for my father and we need to understand this every time and uh, i still have one more slide and this slide it's uh i think i i can see his mercy with with us it's when the last plague was about to pass on fair and perils place to kill all the firstborn of the Egypt. And the uh, Exodus 12, 13 says, the blood will be a sign for you on the house where you are. And when I see, okay, and when I see who are inside, I might kill him. And when I see how much bad you are, can you see his mercy on, on what is like right here? He's not looking for who is inside, how much big is your sin, how much bad were you. He's looking for the blood. And he said, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And that's why we are here today. And uh, he is still giving the opportunity for me, for you, to take this blood. Mary, yes, she was a woman who gave her room to have the Savior in her, in her room. But uh, everything came from the Father, the seed. And uh, he is a perfect blood. And I just want to tell you today, I listened to a story about one boy that uh, was something happening with the humanity and they, everybody was dying, dying, dying. And they found in one place that one boy, he has the exactly type of the healing blood. And uh, they went to the father and say, can we have your son? Can we have your son? Because the blood of your son is going to heal the whole humanity. And the father said, yeah, you can take some blood of my son. And uh, the doctor said, no, we need the whole thing. He's going to need to die. He's going to need to die to give his own blood for the humanity. Do you want to do that? And that was exactly what God did. He gave his only son the whole blood. And it was perfect plan because now we are here.
purified by his blood. And this blood has power. I want you to remember this every time you take this. This opened my, my, my mind a little bit when I listen about this story about the pregnancy. And this makes more, even more, to trust in him, what he did. I don't know how long it took for the doctors to found, find out that the mom's blood doesn't go with the baby's blood. I don't know, but uh, I'm telling you, that time God knew already. And we just found out. And that sometimes we don't have to, but we just need to believe that his power is powerful. This blood heals. This blood, it's a new life for you, for me, and for who believes in the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I think everybody already has the, the juice. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we thank you. Because uh, even after we seen it, we lost the connection with you, Jesus. But uh, you already had a plan even before we seen. Because you knew everything. As you know my life, as you know uh, the life of everyone here today. You know the life who is lis listening online. You know, Jesus. And sometimes we look to us and we see nothing perfect. But uh, you in us, you are who per make us perfected. And we thank you for the blood of your son Jesus that make me perfect and justified and righteousness in you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for this, for this, um, bread we bless the bread we bless this juice right now in your memory as you was on that cross you gave you gave your body for us and we thank you for everything in the name of Jesus amen you can take you can take the bread His body was broken for us. And by his striped, we are healed. You can take the juice. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. It's a pure blood. Came from the heaven. Pure. And we thank you, Jesus. We thank you so much. We love you and worship you. Amen. God bless everyone. Good morning. I just want to mention that tomorrow... Um, one of the parents of a preschooler has been asking me for several weeks about being baptized. I told her to let me know. She wants to be baptized at 4 o'clock after school tomorrow, she and her oldest daughter. And um, we put out the message to others. Um, one of our teachers that was going to preach the chapel this past Wednesday texted me in the morning and said, Pastor, can we just have worship and some prayer? He said, I'll give like a 10-minute message. And if people want prayer, they can come and pray and uh, talk about what they're going through. So nobody was really moving, so I just went row to row and asked. Um, actually, three of the boys came and asked for healing of loved ones, but four of the boys came and asked to be saved. And so we prayed with them, and so I put out the message to the whole school that if they want to, they, so they should be baptized now. If you've received Christ and you're not baptized, you really need to be baptized. Oh, uh, people say, I'm not saved if I don't get baptized. 
you're saved, but if you're not going to come and do the public confession, this is a public ceremony like a wedding. I can say to my wife, I love you, but I'm not going to do a wedding because I don't really want to do that in front of everybody. And she would say, oh, if you're ashamed of me, we're not being together, right? What Jesus said, we're not to be ashamed of him. You need to come. If you've been saved, you need to come. Not, oh, I got baptized as a baby. That's not baptism. It's believer baptism. I've received Jesus. We're going to bring the pool up on here. You lie down under the water backwards. That signifies you're buried. You die to your old life. You're dead. You're gone. You rise. Christ is in you now. And now I belong to Jesus. Now I'm going to let Jesus owns me now. I'm bought with his blood. And I don't belong to myself. And his life is my life now. So if you haven't done that, you need to do that. You, you know, um, well, the thief on the cross wasn't baptized. Well, he couldn't come down and be baptized. But he publicly confessed from the cross that we deserve death, and this man has done nothing amiss. He's innocent. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. So, but we can, and we must. Everybody who got saved in the entire New Testament Received Jesus and got baptized. If you've received Jesus, you need to be baptized. If you can make it, we're going to start at 4 o'clock. It'll probably run a few minutes later. And we'll just keep baptizing as long as people keep coming. So please, at least come and join in and sing along. It might not be a convenient time for you. But if it's later, we can wait too. Yes. Tomorrow, yes. She said that worked for her. And if it doesn't work for you and you want to be baptized, we can do it on a Sunday morning. That's great. Uh, you can say, well, next week or the week after or whenever, I would like to be baptized. It doesn't take very long to fill up the pool. It's a portable. We put it up here. And please make that public confession. It's like, the, it's like I, I uh, liken it to a wedding ceremony. Come in, in front of everybody. Say, I need Jesus, and I am receiving him. I am dying to my old life, and he is coming in. I'm rising in newness of life with him. So please join us if you can. If you can't and you want to be baptized, please don't hesitate. If you said right now I want to be baptized, I could fill it up in one hour. <laughs> You know, I, wait, I ran a hot water line up to the bathroom, and you probably noticed there's a hose in there. I just pulled a tank up here. I put the hose in, and the hot water fills it up. So we can baptize pretty quickly anytime a person, if we're having a service and somebody says, I want to be baptized, we can have it ready not long afterwards. We can fellowship and then have a baptism. So please don't hesitate. It's very important. Thank you. Okay. Yes. No, when people came uh, in Jesus' day, they just came up, they heard the gospel, and they got baptized. My brother, in the summer, he preaches on the, on the, down at Ocean City, and the people come, and they just walk out in the ocean. He baptizes them right in the ocean, just in their clothes. When we have it at school, the people come in their clothes. Pawn got baptized last He had his tie, his dress, he had his suit pants, everything on, and we did the baptism outside. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're wearing. Probably bring a change of clothes because you are going to be wet. <laughs> you are not coming up dry, but uh, <laughs> yes. Okay. So not, the, not, not next Sunday, but the Sunday after. Next Sunday you'll be away, right? Okay. That'll be February 3rd, is it? Like 12... 11 minus 7, 4, February 4th. So you want to be baptized February 4th? Okay, sounds good. Is, if anybody else wants to, we'll do it right here on Sunday morning, February 4th. Okay, thank you. You don't have anything else, Marcia? Okay. Thank God for the precious...